So the first time we heard about a roller crimper was when we were reading a publication about how to manage your cover crops profitably. And they had just mentioned kind of in passing about Rodale Institute's roller crimper. So I hopped online and watched some of their videos and was immediately enthralled with how that worked and the possibility of, wow, not using herbicide or tillage to terminate a cover crop was seemed like the holy grail. On the mind for <laughs> for a lot of years. I wanted to build one to put on the front of the tractor. The uh, Dawn uh, roller crimpers on front of your planter kind of intrigued me. Finally, we just decided to get a 30 foot folding pull behind roller crimper. Keep it simple. Mm -hmm. So this is the first year that we are have a roller crimper at our disposal. So we have some cereal rye that the cows have not been grazing. And that is the those are the acres that we're going to let go till pollen shed, which will probably be late May early June. So it, it's going to probably delay soybean planting beyond where we normally are comfortable with having to still be within the uh, crop insurance planting dates, which I think is important. Uh, but really, we're a little nervous because we know that cereal rye just doesn't all of a sudden shed pollen all at the same time. You know, you have different areas of the field that will mature first. So we're a little nervous about how to um, properly identify when to roll, when is the best time to roll to get that best kill. Uh, but it's also kind of exciting to have this um, new venture on the horizon. We like to plant the Elbon variety of cereal rye because it comes out of dormancy earlier and then and therefore sheds pollen earlier. And after it does start to shed that pollen, and of course we have to be uh, calibrate our eyeballs to make sure that the majority of the field is in fact shedding pollen so that when we come through with that roller crimper it can knock it down and crimp those stems and those stems should be brittle enough that it will actually kill that cereal rye and leave a nice brown mulch mat after it dies. So when we are establishing our cereal rye cover crop, it's really important to get it established as early as possible uh, when we're using it for the purposes of roller crimping. And early as possible, ideally, is the last week or two of September. Um, so that pretty much means after, a, after harvesting a corn crop. And we do that using a no-till drill to make sure we get that seed in the right place. Uh, and we do it by chasing the combine. Basically, as that combine moves through the cornfield, that cereal rye drill is right behind that combine seeding that cereal rye. And we have up, recently upped our rate uh, to 90 pounds of cereal rye to the acre. So after the cereal rye reaches pollen shed, we'll go ahead and do what we normally do, which is plant green. Uh, plant our soybeans green into that cereal rye cover crop and then have another tractor right behind that following the same tracks to roll that um, cereal rye down. Uh, we really like our cereal, cereal rye cover crop. In the past we have just terminated with an herbicide and left it standing. This year we did a little roller crimping and I really like it flat down on the ground like this on a day like today when it's 98 degrees or whatever it is even just putting your hand on this bare soil top versus under this rye, you can tell, I mean, it's noticeably cooler to the touch. And if, if I was a soil microbe, I certainly would want to be here and not there. And even when we dig up a little chunk in an area that's bare, it's still, it's still moist and it still crumbles, but it's not cool. This is moist, crumbly, and cool. Oh, it's just, it's night and day, just from touching. And it's June, we got a long way to go. So we planted and roller crimped this on the same day, May, 30, May 31st, uh, many, <laughs> I thought, many days after 70% anthesis. Uh, but as you can see, it didn't kill everything. The real dead stuff you see in the background, we, we went ahead and sprayed an herbicide on. But check this out. Isn't this interesting? I'm just noticing this. This guy here is just shedding pollen. Sure. This plant here is just starting to shed pollen. Now, I don't know if that's because we had regrowth. I doubt it. After rolling, I think seed quality was a huge factor in this. I think we used some bin run seed. Even the bin run seed was, it wasn't initially grown and harvested for seed. It actually was rye that accidentally went to seed and then we cleaned the seed out of the clean grain sample and the soybeans. So I think the, um, 
seed quality was marginal and I think we had plants in different stages, maybe. I don't know, it's really strange stuff. Anyway, most of it killed, what, 20%, 30% didn't kill. I really do think the next phase of agriculture, or I hope the next phase of agriculture is organic no-till. I really like that because it's, you know, your conventional folks want to apply less herbicide, your organic folks want to do less tillage, and it's a perfect opportunity for those two to put their brains together and come up with a solution for both. And that really appeals to me, and I think that could be applicable to almost any operation anywhere. So I'm really excited about the idea of where organic no-till can take agriculture as a whole and take everybody with it.